Welcome to our podcast, Charting the Course, presented by Emmanuel Church Apostolic Community. Our podcast will be presented by gifted teachers that are called, anointed, and appointed to expound upon the Word of God. We will be discussing various topics that are relevant to living a holy life today according to the Word. Hi, I'm Patricia Gray here with... Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa Hurdle. And today we're talking again about trusting God in death. So today we're going to talk about how grief affects the family, the loss of a family member, and how grief affects the loss of a spouse. Yes. So we were talking before about how diff the differences of our losses have impacted our lives and in that process for us to trust God in it. And what I was sharing with um, Dr. Vanessa is that when I lost my daughter, when my daughter passed and when my um, mother passed, it was a process because they both were sick. So we knew at some point in time that they were going to be leaving, especially once hospice came in. But overall, for my granddaughter, um, who we lost a year prior, and my father, who I lost back 17 years ago, it was sudden. I saw them one night, and the next morning they were gone. And it wrenched me. It affected me totally different totally different and I didn't I couldn't shake it I could not shake it it took me to a place of darkness and um, even though I know the word even though I trusted the word um, I was I felt that I was more sure in the word during those times because first with my father I was freshly coming in first freshly coming to Christ and um, receiving the Holy Spirit so I felt I had a little more strength but it shook me my daughter, my granddaughter, when she died um, the next morning, it tore me apart. But it was God who sent the people of God to us because in a time where I could not get up, I mean, on my knees, they came and lifted me and helped me walk, helped me navigate through day to day to day because I couldn't do it in myself. So death is different for everybody. And death, even when you face death, it's different for you every time. And you never know how it's going to affect you, but you know that it will. But you have to grab hold to the Word of God. You have to, because if you don't, you're going to be in that spiral tunnel and you're going to be so deep in it that you're not going to look for a place of exit. So I'm coming to you from the viewpoint of losing a spouse. My husband of 32 years passed um, about three years ago, and we were married for 32 years, and the three years has not really been more than 10%. And then when you look at it, 10% is not a lot. And so what one of the things that I, I came to understand is that when a uh, couple is married, the vow says, until death do us part. When we speak these vows, we, 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 we just, we don't really think about the deepness of it in sickness and in health. Mm -hmm. So when a spouse is sick, I'm supposed to stay here and take care of, this, of him. And the same thing for, you know, the husband and the wife, whichever way you're looking at it from. But when that, that spouse passes, the heart is actually ripped in two. And so you have jagged pieces of the heart that has to knit back together. And that knitting back together takes time, okay? And so even when you, you hear a song or you see a picture or something, it just, um, it just causes that, that pain to come back. And so what we have to do is when that time comes, we have to call on God to give us peace and strength. When I hear of someone passing, I say, Lord, please give them peace and please give them strength. Mm -hmm. My husband wasn't ill. He went in the hospital uh, like on the 31st and he passed on the 14th. So for me, that was a sudden death. And it was, it was, it was hard to see him lying there. And one thing I thought was 
he wouldn't want to be here in the state that he was in. Mm -hmm. He was very outgoing. He was always helping everybody. Uh, he was the life of the party, as they say. So when he passed, I lost a part of the life of the party. But in his passing, I had to call on God for peace and strength. Now, grief takes, like she says, grief, people handle grief differently. Okay? Um, some people can more, as a matter of fact, in some countries, people mourn for a year. They wear black for a year. Some countries, people wear black for two years. And at the end of that period, they consider that the mourning period is over. Mm -hmm. But for us, we don't have a, t a set time to stop grieving. We don't have a set time to say, okay, I'm walking out of this into something new. When, when your spouse passes, you, you, you think about them all day long. When they were here with you, you think, thought about them all day long. What do they want to eat? Why are they not home from work? Are they stuck in traffic? He didn't call me yet. And so when that, that, that spouse passes, for a long time you're thinking the same thing. When is he coming home? Why hadn't he called me? And we look at at the house and we say, well, this is where he sat. As a matter of fact, I got rid of my husband's chair because I couldn't look at it. It was just too hard to look at it. So in that, being home alone is that quiet time. Like I, I said earlier, um, that I used to think that after the funeral, it was all over. But after the funeral, it is not all over that grieving period just starts when you get all that quiet mm -hmm. and you're sitting by yourself and it's hard to go through that so when we get around people that's why we enjoy hugs mm -hmm. we enjoy somebody saying that we love you so in trusting God through this time allow God to heal you in every step okay the first step of acknowledging this person is no longer here Okay, the Lord says, I'll be with you. Lord, I'm with you always. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is, um, well, am I going to stay in this house? Am I going to keep doing what I'm doing? Am I going to stay at my church? All these things flood your mind. And then you have to say, God, show me the direction. And everything we do, we need to ask God to show us direction. That's right. I agree. Um when you were talking about just that emptiness, not a day go by that I don't think about my daughter. And uh, I don't think a month go by, I don't think about my mom. And from time to time, I think about my father. And then if I see my granddaughter's picture, I think about her. Uh, but I look at those things because they're all different. And when I think about them, are all different. But I truly thank God that he gave me that time of reflection because in order for me to evaluate whether or not I am really, really trusting God in it, it's the process of how often do I stay in that thought? And if my thoughts stay there, then I'm becoming, I'll become very um, jittery, anxious, or very, very um, torn and upset. So. When I think about them, I just start to rejoice. I start to thank God and thank him because of his goodness. When I question, what am I doing that's causing all of these things? God had to let me know that in order for me to reign with him, I'm going to suffer on this side. Anybody that's truly seeking God and truly want to serve him, you're going to go through things on this side. And it's going to be loss. It's going to be trials and tribulations. It's going to be hurts and pains. It's going to be bumps and bruises. But in the processes, know that whatever you suffer in this world is not to be compared to the glories that you're going to receive when you get on that other side and you're able to be with Christ. And I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that he chose to use me, and I'm thankful that he allowed me to be able to share some of this with you all. It's so much more, but it's just a little bit that we can share. In our final moments, I would say to any married couple, talk to each other and find out the things that that person wants in their final, final moments or in their, for their funeral. Because lots of times people say, well, I'll talk about it later. We don't know when death is going to come. So since we don't know when death is going to come, 
Talk to your loved one about it. Make pre-arrangements if you can. If not, there's a lot of confusion at the time, mm -hmm. and you're going to really, really, really have to call on God to give you some peace, some strength, and some direction. And what I know to be true is in those dark moments, God will encourage you. If he will send somebody to encourage you, mm -hmm. he will encourage you in a song. He will encourage you in the word. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, just rely on God wholeheartedly, and he will do it for you. God bless you. We're charting the course, and we love you. Thank you for tuning in today to our Charting the Course podcast segment. We welcome your comments, questions, or any topics you would like to have answers to. Join us next time as we continue to chart the course according to the Word of God.